Welcome to the demo library, May 21st, vaccinated edition. Um, so we, uh, we are, today we are demonstrating how to use alginate and very simple plaster mold making. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're using alginate. We have some alginate from Smooth On, uh, pretty industry standard for artists, um, but there's a lot of different brands and you can get out there and get some. Um, so it's basically a one-to-one -one mix um, of, of a powder, which is alginate, which is a seaweed base um, and water. Um, so whenever you are uh, making molds, what you want to start doing is you want to start getting into the habit of just like collecting whatever. So takeout containers, yogurt, miso, whatever you have. Um, every so often you have to bite the bullet and buy something. Um, and when you do, you really need to keep that stuff clean. Tofu containers, salsas, whatever you've got. Um, so we're going to make uh, our one-to-one -one mix. And I'm just going to kind of be pretty quick. Um, one thing is, this is what we're going to be making a mold of. This represents uh, the moment when we had to uh, moisturize our hands constantly because we were using so much hand sanitizer, assisting so many students uh, who may or may not have COVID. And we were just constantly hand sanitizing and our fingers were just cracking left and right. And this is actually found in a weird random box. Um, it's horrible. Do not recommend using this. We're going to make a mold of it. Um, Okay, so uh, okay, so one to one. I'm going to start with my mix bucket here. Um, we're going to oh, and what we're going to be doing is over here. You should be able to see in one of the cameras. Um, we're basically what we did was we hot glued a popsicle stick to this um, hand lotion. It just barely doesn't touch the bottom there. Can you explain why it's important that something is? Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to make, thank you for that, Chella. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have um, basically like a full mold of this, of this little object. Yeah, get up there. And, um, and so essentially the goal is to get it as like clean and simple and tight as you can. So you're using as little material as you need to, um, but also you have a, a way to pour in our our positive material, which is our plaster. So this right here is gonna be an opening in the mold and we're gonna pour alginate right up to the top of that. Okay, so I'll set that aside. Um, so my hands are about to get really messy. So at a certain point here, uh, Chella is gonna set her camera down and we're gonna hope for the best for our viewers at home. And then she's gonna take over because we're gonna be kind of going as fast as we can. So again, it's a one-to-one -one mold. There's a slight chance I'm gonna need a little more water. Get some water, extra water. Extra water is a good thing. Is there a specific temperature of water that you um, like to use? For this, I, I always recommend until you're like really advanced, use cold water. It makes, it's a chemical reaction. It makes it go slower. Um, and is this bad for your hands at all? Like alginate, honestly, you do not need to use any lotion. You do not use any, um, uh, any sort of, any sort of kind of moisturizer really before you're using, um, if you're doing like an, a mold of your eye or something like that, you do want to kind of put some lotion on just as a kind of a just in case, but you don't put like Vaseline. It's not like plaster. One thing that you can do is you can get whatever you're making a mold of wet um, with just water before mold making um, because it will make it so there's less air bubbles that attach to it. Question. I have a question. Um, so I know when you're mixing plaster, you don't want to put it down the sink. Like you don't want to wash your hands off in the sink. You have a rinse bucket. Is that something you should do? Same know? thing, yeah. But with alginate, you're going to kind of watch it gel up on my hands. It's going to take about six or eight minutes uh, to fully gel up. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to wash my hands until it's gelled up, and then I'll just peel it off. Okay, so this is my extra water in case I need it. So I am about to add it. So unlike plaster, I'm just going to kind of mix it in. Um, and... And I'm just going to go. So I just kind of mix it. And as I'm doing it, um, and Chella, in your handheld shots, can you do a, a, just like a right overhead? Because I'm not getting quite the angle I want. This really. So if you see how I'm kind of moving my fingers, I'm just really kind of like moving them in kind of a circle. I'm trying not to. So this is real thick. So I'm just going to add a tad more water. Um, alginate, you can get kind of and I'm kind of moving it fast. You can kind of get, um, it's a little bit by touch. So this is kind of a thick yogurt consistency. 
Um, thanks for adjusting those cameras. Um, but once you've kind of added enough, you don't want to add more. So at this point, that's that's the most I'm going to add. This is a pretty nice thick one. No, there's going to be a few lumps, and you don't want to over mix it because or else it'll start setting up. Good question. Good question. Okay, so this is still wet. I'm now going to take this. Um, so you'll see. One thing you can do is when you're pouring any sort of mold making material, you can start off low and you can do these long, slow drips. Um, and it'll actually, it'll get out some of the air bubbles. It kind of will collapse it. Um, so here we go. So I am now going to get there and I'm now gonna use the, I'm gonna use the side of my hand so would you kind of make sure you capture this hand motion from back here? So I'm using the side of my hand to scrape it out. So I'm just going to use my hand. And this is a great method for plaster or alginate. It looks like we have just the almost literally the exact amount that we need. There's going to be a little displacement. So I'm going to hold off from getting any more out. So you can see. So now here I have, and I'm just going to kind of do it. And we are going to get a little displacement. And that is it. And essentially, it will, because there's some volume in there, um, uh, you know what it will do? Cello, why don't you set your camera down? So it kind of captures this motion for a second. And then why don't you keep a finger on there just so it stays down? Because it's going to take a few minutes to set. I just, I always, whenever you're doing something, I, always, I set up a, just a bolt. Um, and we're just going to make a quick, easy mold of just this bolt. So the top of this thing. Um, and you know what, actually that's it. We're not gonna get a full mold. So you know what, I'm just gonna do a mold the inside of my hand. Um, uh, I really discourage um, the first time, first times you're using alginate to, um, to make molds of your hands. I actually kind of basically make it a rule in my classes that uh, intro students cannot make hand molds um, because it takes a lot of alginate and it's just kind of so easy and there's no criticality with it. Um, and so like as you as you heard this kind of story of this of this hand lotion, um, it like kind of captures this moment uh, for us who have been teaching in person in this kind of very scary moment of the pandemic, um, the kind of fear and yet the kind of desire of wanting to kind of continue making things and kind of wanting to continue teaching and encouraging others. And we were in a place where we we're just safe enough with just enough of a low count. And we had just the kind of right existing building where we had so much ventilation that we could kind of, we could kind of be safe um, to a certain extent. Um, and so essentially uh, that, that hand lotion, and then also I inherited this kind of building just two months before the, two and a half months before the pandemic. And so there was like drawers that I hadn't even opened pre-pandemic. And so that weird hand lotion was found literally in like a random drawer of junk from some previous inhabitant of this building and space. Um, and our hands one day were so desperate. So we desperate. cracked. It was disgusting. They were so cracked. We just use hand sanitizer like every 20 <laughs> minutes for like full eight hour days. Yeah. Hey, can I request something? Can you yeah. put your finger on here so I can adjust the camera? Oh, yeah. Instead? Uh -huh. okay, beautiful. Oh, I see. I'm now looking at the, yeah. the footage here. She's looking interesting. There is some <laughs> weird doubling of. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. So I'm now double handing. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm just going to kind of continue. <laughs> so I was telling, so we had a student, um, we have, we have a couple. So in my intro to sculpture class right now, um, so we're, we're kind of talking over this because this is just a, this is how much time it actually takes. We have a couple intro students who are still fully remote and and uh, for their final assignments, um, the remote students, we've given a care package of alginate and plaster to. Um, and our in-person students right now, each of them have an individualized 
assignment. Because one of the things that in pandemic sculpture teaching we've discovered is that you can't have everybody in an intro class using the same material at once because there's just too many people. You can't have five people in line for the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, there'll be a couple students doing some, some, some form of woodworking. There'll be a couple students doing some sort of wax, a couple students doing some sort of mold making, a couple students doing some sort of plaster, a couple cardboard, students, cardboard, clay, clay stuff from all over the um, paper mache, found objects, mm -hmm. found up, you know, tree sap. Tree sap. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so uh, kind of, tangenting here while we're letting things glue um but yeah so we'll uh, we'll, we'll be able to watch what the tangent was that's gonna be great that's gonna be we'll actually know what we were talking about <laughs> <laughs> but um okay so right now as i'm kind of discovering this i'm t i'm just yeah, i'm starting to feel that it's gelling up uh -huh. um in the alginate here um and even if my hand wasn't holding this little kind of bucket of of alginate, I would I would still not be wiping it off. I wouldn't use a sink. I would really just wait for it to peel off. But yep, so I still having to put some pressure on this because it hasn't quite gelled up enough to to firm it up. Um, but oh yeah, so I discourage people when they're first getting into alginate to make molds of their hands. Um, but every so often there is a, a situation where you do need to like know how to do that. You have some sort of an idea. And we actually outside, we have a student, Sherry. Who, I go visit? Yeah, do you want to go visit Sherry? So Sherry's one of our advanced students. Do you want to um, say hi to Sherry? And Sherry is not planning to be on. Uh, did you turn your audio on? Yep. Okay, Chella's going to take so, over. So basically, this is kind of a more advanced mold. Sherry has this beautiful mold of her hand. This is, I think, the second, one. second one we've made. Yeah. We made it by pouring a lot of alginate in this pipe, so which we then cut in half. Together. Yeah. And are you going to make another mold? Nice. So something interesting that you'll notice on this is that there's a lot of like air bubbles and cracks because we've reused alginate. Um, that can all be removed so it can be more perfect or you can leave them and have kind of a weird mold. Um, alginate kind of deteriorates over time and often you have to kind of break it apart to um, open it up. Yeah. So molds change. Sherry, will you get your original cast? So Sherry's now going to be making a third cast and Sherry's using a technical plaster to make her cast. So she's using like really what's called like a, in the industry, it'll be known as like a statuary grade. It's like a 10,000 PSI pounds per square like inch. Yeah, you have to use a drill. It's a, it's by weight. Um, and it's, it's like, it, it really is like a technical plaster. Um, and it, it, it uh, can have kind of, it can do things that pottery plaster or hydrocal, um, which are more kind of general kind of miscellaneous plasters can't do. So um, Sherry's going to show this. Here is Sherry. And so one thing that, so Sherry is one of our advanced students. And Sherry, do you want to talk about your birthmark for a moment? No, I have a birthmark. And yeah, it just kind of came to the foreground this year. Yeah. <laughs> and so Sherry basically wanted to make a mold of of her birthmark arm. And it's just like the kind of most gorgeous <laughs> amazing, amazing arm, arm ever. So so yeah. Okay, so over here, as so I just kind of pulled my finger off. And so you can see that this alginate has now fully kicked. Um, and so now I'm going to kind of show you how it kind of peels off. Do we have kind of a two camera detail on this right here? So you can see on kind of where it's really thin, it just kind of peels off. And over here, it just kind of peels off. And so um, I'm just kind of pulling it off, pulling it off. And then there's the kind of inside of my and so um, a lot of you maybe up to this point didn't really even understand why you would want to do what I'm doing or the kind of potential um, kind of insanity of what this can do. So I'll just, I'll end up, I have this tofu container. I'll end up taking this kind of inside of the palm of my hand. And I think I'll just kind of lay it in this tofu container. And- Hey Michael, I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I know that for the specific assignment we're filming this for, people are going to be using plaster. Yes. To pour into alginate molds. Yeah. Can you use other materials? Yeah. So you can use wax into alginate molds. So you can molds. use things that are hot. You can use things that are hot. Um, so you can use things like, I don't know if Michella will discover if she can use tree sap. Oh, I've discovered I already. You can. She has. She has. <laughs> I, know. I know you have. Um, and you can use things like uh, rubber. Um, uh, different kinds that, that there's some, some asterisks to that last material. You can use concrete, um, different kinds of mortar. Um, so you can see, so this is basically the cleanup. So I'm just really peeling it off my hand. And so you can see where it was actually like fully mixed and not just kind of dry. It comes off super easily. Um, and so you don't want to get this stuff down the sink. Um, at my old school at Cal State Long Beach, um, uh, I was there once when the uh, custodial staff was kind of doing the deep clean of the of the kind of the drain oh, underneath the ground. And he's like, there's this all this pink stuff. <laughs> You're like, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Like, there's all this pink stuff in the, in the drain. What is that stuff? It's really weird. So, okay. So then I just kind of really rub it. Um, and then I will take kind of like a wet rag to get this kind of last little bit of debris off. Okay. So... So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of peel this off. I can actually, you'll see that I'll basically most likely be able to just break this off. So this is this is kind of an interesting, do we have a, do we still have a razor blade over here? Has that kind of disappeared? Right over there on the cloud. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of like clean this up because what we need is we also need a pour spout, right? So we need a place for our plaster, which is what's gonna become a liquid. It's, it starts as a, a powder and we add water to it. And then it will, um, it will become a liquid and then we'll pour that liquid into this, into this space. And so what I'm gonna do, kind of similar to the way I kind of pulled it off of my hand, is I'm gonna see if I can get it out in one piece. And there's a chance and it's actually looking good up. Oh. So you can see, do you see this? It's kind of like actually opening. It's opening up. It's opening, but I'm getting. It's very cozy in there. It is very cozy. Ooh, disgusting. So it's a little bit like a birthing. <laughs> and I think it's prob probably the end of it. The cap and there's actually, you can see this thing is like suctioning. Ooh. So there's probably gonna be a fart sound. So please. Nice. Don't laugh. <laughs> um, but so you can see. And so if you look in there, and I'll show, I think I'll let you with your camera kind of see if you can zoom in as deep here, I'll do it so can you get, yeah, so you can see really, is it focused? I don't think so. Um, but so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pause our recording and we're gonna mix up some plaster because this is getting into a pretty long one. So if you haven't mixed plaster, uh, go to our plaxing mixing, mixing demo library at this point. Watch that. Make sure you watch the plaster cleanup demo at this point. We are going to mix enough plaster to cast a positive of our mystery hand lotion and the inside of the palm of my hand. All right. See you yes. Okay. So we're back recording. And so you'll notice I just mixed plaster. You'll see a little island. It's fully slaked in there. It's been sitting for about a minute. Uh, I'm just going to kind of do one quick pull out. So we have our two molds that we're going to cast. I just wanted to show you how to kind of quickly clean. So this is the alginate as it's stuck. And if you let this thing sit till tomorrow, it becomes a real pain in the butt to clean. But if you just let it kind of fully gel up um, as it has been for the last 10 minutes or so, it's really easy to clean. So please, please, when you use alginate, just clean the alginate stuff right away. Um, you can kind of get it out mostly with just your fingers, get it out from the outside because what happens is it'll dry and it'll dehydrate and then it'll become a pain to clean. So please just get into the habit of, of cleaning as you go with alginate. Okay, so now I'm going to mix our plaster. Um, so I'll take it over here and now I'm just going to mix. So we're for this, we're just using regular pottery plaster, nothing fancy. Um, you know, Chella, as I'm mixing this, we haven't done any, added any colorant in any of our plaster. Do you have any just like quick, mm -hmm. um, like something that you, that you think would be maybe nice as a way to capture this, this weird little moment 
in, uh, in our year of teaching uh, during a pandemic. Um, so you can add all sorts of different water soluble pigments um, into plaster. Um, okay, so what so. I'm gonna add is, this is just um, flash. It's just a kind of acrylic paint. I'm just gonna take a little bit Just kind of dollop it in. Okay. okay, so you can see it's just just paint. It might not all get mixed in, and that's okay. And you can actually like you can actually do that on purpose, where you let things get a little streaky um, when you're mixing. You can also mix in like two different colors. And when I was a little tiny kid at my elementary school, we did some plaster um, and we added paint to it. And I still have, or my parents have, some little weird little colored plaster thing. I think one was green, I think a little bit light green, and one was a little bit light. We're gonna add a little bit more. You'll notice I'm bouncing it again. Um, I'm bouncing to get the air bubbles out. So one thing when you're when you're doing mold making, a lot of the online tutorials that you'll find for alginate or plaster, they're just they're so by the book. One of the things that I'm hoping in this demo library that you've gotten by this point, or if this is maybe your first demo library video, um, that you are seeing the kind of discovery and the plate. Whoa! <laughs> I don't know if that was captured. <laughs> That was on purpose. That was a special effect. Uh -huh. you, don't to get you can see all these bubbles. So now this is pretty bubble free, relatively bubble free plaster now. And so now I have this. Maybe we'll just kind of do a detail of, as I pour it in. Um, and sometimes, because this is a kind of a less important thing, I'll just kind of take that first fuzzy stuff and I'll just kind of go there. And this is the one. So. Go like a nice thin, so you see just how little plaster. Okay, and then for the rest, I'll oh, just do this. You're in kind of a gross color. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing, so with the alginate, um, and because it's it's Friday afternoon, um, we are probably not going to meet up again and we might do a demold on Saturday or Sunday for a short second part two. Uh, but normally with plaster and when you're doing mold making, I really like to, to not do a mold until you have like at the, you want to kind of do all the prep and then you would like kind of make the mold at the beginning of your day. You would like actually do the casting at the beginning of the day so that throughout the day you can basically, you can still there, see there are still a few bubbles. And so as I bounce it, and I'm glad I did, because we would have had some definitely some some lost information. Um, um, I have a question. Yeah. Another thing you can do is you can vibrate. So with like concrete, they'll have these like vibrating machines that a little like literally just like vibrate into concrete when you're making casting steps or stairs or anything. Chelsea, what's your question? So um as you mentioned, we're going to be leaving this to set a little bit with yep. um, plaster inside of it. And I know that alginate molds, since they're made of like organic materials, they aren't usable forever. They like dry out. You can only use them for a short amount of time. Is there anything Correct. we can do in the short term to yes. extend that lifetime? Yes. Thank you for that. Um, that really of remembering of a detail that was not mentioned yet um, posed as a question. Um, uh is you can take a lid um, and you can cover it and the other thing you can do so this is not exactly tight fitting because we had a little bit uh it went over a little bit um is we can also kind of wrap plastic or put in a plastic bag um to kind of save this save this alginate so it doesn't evaporate and doesn't dehydrate um, you can also put it in a refrigerator so basically if it stays cold and closed up tight it'll last a long, lot longer so i've actually had Alginate molds, like, so that mold that Sherry showed us of her arm, um, that we've had wrapped in plastic and that's now about three days old. And, um, but, uh, but again, just life sometimes doesn't make it so you can make quite as many 
mold as you were hoping. And I know I have some rinse water over here. So always, whenever you're doing anything with plaster, always, always have a rinse bucket. And be sure to watch the plaster cleanup video to understand how to dispose of that. Yeah, and so you do not just pour this down the sink, just as a constant and frequent reminder. Um, uh, I have one more question. Yes, one more question posed as a reminder. Of something we forgot. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, so sometimes you might be dashing out of the door after you've made an all day demo and you might actually have time to mix up plaster and pour it in there. Yeah. Is there something you should do like, I don't know, maybe fill it with water or something while you let it keep overnight? Oh, so if you remove the plaster, if you remove the plaster, and you have to let your alternate mold sit for a while. Whatever like you can do is mix up. If you can, if you can add more plaster to it, mm -hmm. if you intend to use it, keep plaster in it. Okay. It'll keep your mold a lot better, or else it'll really collapse way more. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I have tried the just like letting water, and I'm I'm that the jury is still out on that. Maybe somebody out there. Uh, I've heard been successful. Oh, you have had good success with that. Okay. Um, all right. Good. Thank you for the. Thank you for that uh, extra information. Yeah, I I basically kind of have made it a policy for maybe the last ten years as I've used alginate to never do that. To always like add plaster if I if I know I if I even suspect that I want to use it again. And so this is pottery plaster, so it'll take about forty five minutes to cure up. Um, and I think that just about ends our, our mold of our disgusting hand lotion. Okay. Okay. Bye.